this is going to feel a little like deja vu, okay? Um, just now, we introduced the idea of arithmetic progressions, APs. We know that they're just a specific kind of progression where the progression follows this very, very, like literally the simplest rule you could possibly have. Namely, you start somewhere and you just add. Just add numbers, right? Um, so we define them with all the three ways that we knew before. And using those three ways, we develop the test. If you've got a given AP, sorry, if you've got a given progression, you can find out whether it is an AP just by searching for that common difference because that's what makes an AP an AP. So we're going to progress to this other kind of progression that we're interested in, the geometric progression, which is what we would abbreviate as our GP. I've been advised that this is a good color combination to use, so I'm going to stick with it. Now, in just the same way, we're going to use our three lenses for defining a progression in the same order, just like we did with APs, okay? Except for geometric progressions, what makes the geometric progression special? Well, it starts off exactly the same way. You define or you set your first term to be A, A for your first value, okay? But here's the difference, instead of a common difference that advances you from one term to the next, instead of adding the same number over and over again, to get to the next term, you multiply the previous term by something. You multiply, okay? So here's your previous term, and you multiply by, now it's not a difference anymore, is it, right? It's not like, oh, every time there's a gap of two or three or negative eight, right? Since it's not a common difference, since you're multiplying by something, we indicate this with the letter R for common ratio, okay? So still the same first value here, or whatever it is you happen to like. And instead of a common difference, what makes a GP a GP is that there is a common ratio. Okay, so that is how we advance from one term to the next. It's very easy to list out what the terms will be. We'll start with A, just like we did before. But the next term will not be a plus something, it'll be a times r. So it'll just be a r. What will the next term be? A r times r again, which is a r squared. And then a r cubed and <coughs> so on. Okay. So that's what a list looks like for a GP. What does the general term look like? Well, remember last time we said the nth term it's always going to have an A in it, and we notice that's the same here. Okay. Uh, over here, we had some number of the common difference being added on, but I will have something ever so slightly different. I have some number of the common ratio being multiplied. How many? See how there are no common differences, and then one, and then two, and then three? There's no common ratio, and then one, and then two, and then three. Just like before, it's always lagging behind by one. So it'll be n minus 1, okay? Now, tying all of that into one nice, neat uh, ball, if I wanted to test whether a progression was geometric or not, I'm not going to use subtraction, because subtraction gets me to a common difference. Instead of subtraction, I'm going to look for division, right? If I divide subsequent terms, then I will find out whether there is a common ratio. So as an example, if I went for something like, say, A, D, U, 2, 41. OK. So if I were provided with this sequence, how would I test whether it has a common ratio or not? Well, first I need to talk about, well, I need to label what these terms are. Term 1, term 2, term 3. And then I'm going to do division just like I did subtraction before. Okay. I'm going to check term 3 on term 2. Term 3 on term 2. So if I'm proving, I can't skip this step here. I need to actually say, do the substitution. If I've done my arithmetic right, <laughs> that's a half, yeah? That's a half. So it's in my interest to express this ratio as simply as I possibly can. Now I just check the other one. Term 2 divided by term 1 which is 82 on 40, sorry, wrong way around, 41 on 82. Order is important, which again is a half. 
So therefore, the ratio that links the terms is the same. In other words, it's common, okay? So if there is a common ratio, it's a GP. If there isn't a common ratio, if I find different values out of these two workings here, then it's not a GP, no problem. Maybe it's something else, okay? Most of the interesting stuff actually happens with geometric progressions, most of the interesting stuff. Um, but you will encounter these in equal frequency, uh, at least at the moment. Just like I mentioned before, you'll see this guy on the reference sheet. You'll also see that one over there, uh, and it becomes pretty important later on. Okay, so again, simple idea, but as you've experienced over the last 40 minutes, um, you can come up with lots of interesting applications of this kind of question just from here, and likewise over here. Okay. Hmm. All right. You mean, can I do these upside down? Hmm. Okay, so that's a really good question. The question that I got asked was, can I do this in... Like, can I do reciprocals? Can I do T2 over T3 and T1 over T2? Um, the short answer is, yes, you can. Like, it ends up creating the same thing. However, I would avoid doing that because what I'm searching for is this. I'm searching for R, yeah? Now, if I want to find R, then you divide a later term by an earlier term. You don't go the other way around. Because if I did term 1 divided by term 2, I don't get R. I get the reciprocal of R. Now, if the R's are the same, then the 1 over R's will be the same. But I haven't established the same thing. Here I've said, look, these two ratios are the same. Because R is what it is in both cases. Not something else related to R, but similar. Um, there's a parallel to this. It's almost identical, actually. If you think about similar triangles, right? Do you remember this? If I say A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and you prove that they're similar, right? We know the corresponding sides in similar triangles are in ratio. But think about that sentence to yourself. Say it back to yourself and think about how it relates here. Corresponding sides in similar triangles. Let me ask you, C, A, and C, are they corresponding sides in similar triangles? And the answer is no, they're not. They are they're not corresponding to each other. They're in the same triangle, right? The corresponding sides would be A and X. Th those two correspond. I could say that they're equal to B on Y. Now, simple arithmetic tells you that I could just as easily have written this. That's just as, that's numerically true. But it doesn't match up to your property, right? These are not corresponding sides in similar triangles any more than uh, the, this is the common ratio. So even though numerically it ends up being the same, I think you should put it in the right order. Okay.